against Kansas coming up in the second game of our national semifinals. Now, earlier today, you saw the Tournament Players Championship in Florida. Larry Mize opening up a four-shot lead over John Mahaffey and Bob Murphy, along with Tim Simpson, tied for third right now. Final round action tomorrow starting at 3 o'clock Eastern here on CBS Sports. Be sure to see that. Right now, let's join Brent Musburger. Since the NCAA basketball season began on CBS Sports last November, our commentators have selected two Chevrolet Most Valuable Players at the end of every game as part of the Chevrolet Scholarship Program. And for each player selected, Chevrolet has donated $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of his school for use by qualified students in their chosen academic fields. In the last 15 years, Chevrolet has donated 2,500 scholarships to assist the youth of America in furthering their educations. Now, this season, we have recognized many players for outstanding game performances, and we've seen some excellent coaching. So today, we're here to present the Chevrolet Player of the Year and Coach of the Year awards as selected by the CBS Sports staff. And to do the honors, we have a great friend of college athletics, Mr. Tom Stout, who is the general marketing manager of Chevrolet. Tom, nice to have you with us. Well, thank you, Brent. And where would you rather be at this time of the year than right here in Dallas to watch the Final Four square off for the NCAA National Championship? This is the place to be. I agree. As a company that constantly strives for excellence, Chevrolet is pleased to honor excellence, both on the playing floor and in the coaching ranks. But considering all those outstanding performances we've seen by individual athletes all season long on CBS, to select just one as the most valuable player had to be a most difficult challenge. Tom, it was very tough, but our NCAA production and on-air talent settled on Walter Berry of St. John's. Berry averaged 23 points a game, pulled down 11 rebounds, led the Redmen to the Big East Tournament Championship, and on into the field of 64 in the NCAA Tournament. Well, Walter, you've had a truly outstanding season. You've played hard for your team and for yourself. And you're only the second player to ever win the Most Valuable Player Award as a junior. And all by itself, that's a great accomplishment. So it's a special privilege for me to be able to present to you the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award for 1986. Congratulations, Walter. It's quite odd until we receive this award. I'd like to thank everybody who's associated with this award, and I'd like to thank my coach, my team, my family, and all my friends. And now it's time to present our CBS Coach of the Year. He is Mike Krzyzewski of the Duke Blue Devils. He had an amazing season with the team that he recruited four years ago. It's a ball club that did not play one bad basketball game under Coach K all season long, and now he is just two victories away from a national championship. Well, Coach, what a year. You've won more games than any other team, and I know getting to the Final Four is the fulfillment of a long-standing objective of yours. And for your dedication and your leadership and your motivation, it's a special privilege to present you with this Coach of the Year Award and a check for $2,500 to the Duke University General Scholarship Fund in your honor. Congratulations. Tom, I want to thank Chevrolet for this prestigious award, and I want to thank all the people at Duke who have helped me earn it. Thank you very much. Mike and uh, Walter, let me add my congratulations on a great job this season by both of you. And Tom, certainly thanks to Chevrolet for their continued involvement in the college scholarship program. Well, thank you, Brent. No one will argue that the MVP in women's basketball this year has once again been Cheryl Miller out of USC. Last night in Lexington, Cheryl Miller got her Women of Troy a date in the championship game tomorrow afternoon. Taking on Tennessee, Miller playing with a broken finger still led the way with 17 points. More importantly, watch the way she sets up her teammates. Five USC players in double figures as they went on to beat Tennessee with ease, 83 to 59. So USC tomorrow will meet Texas, the Lady Longhorns, ranked number one all season long. Keep their perfect record intact. And boy, is there a new star on the horizon. Coloressa Davis right here, 32 points and 18 rebounds. Davis scoring again as Texas was a winner over Western Kentucky, avenging a loss last year to the Lady Hilltoppers, who had knocked the Lady Longhorns out of the tournament one year ago. So the finals tomorrow look like this. USC against Texas, and that'll take place 1 o'clock Eastern time right here on CBS Sports. Cheryl Miller's final game at USC. Can she win a championship for the third time in her career? And Texas, with that 33-0 record, how will they do against USC? 1 o'clock tomorrow here on CBS Sports. 
Duke and Kansas warming up right now for the second game of our national doubleheader. These two teams ranked number one and two at the end of the regular season. They will be playing for a chance to go against Louisville for the national championship. We'll come back with that game after this news update from CBS News. One team has made it in the Monday Night's Championship game. Louisville, an 11-point winner over LSU in the first one. We'll be back in a moment with the second game in our big doubleheader, Duke against Kansas. Today's national semifinal game is sponsored by Valvoline Ford Guard, the motor oil for today's harder-working four-cylinder engines. For Larry Brown's highly regarded Kansas team, this tournament has been a struggle. Led by their brilliant sophomore Danny Manning, the Jayhawks are rich in talent. But they also needed some luck to survive a regional battle against Michigan State. The clock is not operating right now. Dryling tips it up. Kellogg gets it off the glass and in. The clock is not running. It's been stuck on 220. And Judd Heathcote is going to raise some men. The normally unflappable Larry Brown lost his cool and got slapped with a technical that nearly cost the Jayhawks the game. The Kansas rally to catch the Spartans and put them away in overtime. A narrow escape that kept them alive in their push to the Final Four. Today, the Jayhawks go up against the nation's top-ranked team, Duke. Duke breeze to the East Regional behind the leadership of their All-American guard, Johnny Dawkins, whose number is being retired. One of only three Duke players to earn that honor. And the burden is on Dawkins to lead the Blue Devils to their first national championship. It's the last dance for a senior-dominated basketball team. We're at the Reunion Arena, Dallas, Texas. Duke and Kansas are ready for the second national semifinal. Texas, the Jayhawks of Kansas square off against the Blue Devils of Duke, the two teams with the best winning streaks in college basketball. Kansas came into the Final Four having won 16 in a row. That was equal, equal a short time ago by Louisville. And of course, Duke has won 20 in a row. Greg Dryling, the big center for Kansas. You remember how he took charge last week in the regional final against North Carolina State. He yanked down every important rebound. He let no man take a foothold down in the paint area. He hit big field goals. You're watching him with his new haircut. That's the tallest flat top in the world. Now, the story behind what happened to Dryling is that in one of their final timeouts, Larry Brown leaned across and said, get Danny Manning the basketball. Ron Kellogg leaned across the huddle in the direction of Dryling and said, yes, we're not going to get you the ball, Greg. You don't want it. Dryling took a towel off his shoulder. He threw it in Kellogg's face. And Billy Packer, the rest is history. He went on there. He really did go on a tear. He's a huge presence on the inside. Seven foot one, very powerful player. I think he's the key to the ball game because when he's on the floor, Kansas is a very big team. When he goes off the floor, even though they have size, they become very small because Manning is primarily a perimeter player. He must stay in the game if Kansas is going to make a run. Billy, you got a player on that Duke team who was impossible for Kansas to stop in an earlier tournament game. Duke has a great blend of talent, and David Henderson in December might have been the best player in America during that particular month. He was the MVP in the, in the tournament in New York, the NIT preseason. When Kansas tried to go ahead and take care of Dawkins and Allery, it was Henderson that came through. He's in a slump right now in the NCAA tournament. Duke will need him today. When we're asked who will win this game, we say flip a coin. It's that close. We'll be right back to meet the starting lineup. Today's national semifinal game, Duke versus Kansas, is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Mass Mutual. We insure more than lives. We insure success. And by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. To introduce our starting lineups, here's Frank Fallon, the PA announcer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Reunion Arena for this afternoon's national semifinal game between the Kansas Jayhawks and the Blue Devils of Duke University. 
Now let's meet the starting lineup. For Kansas at forward, a 6'11 sophomore from Lawrence, Kansas, number 25, Danny Manning. For Duke at forward, a 6'5 senior from Drury, North Carolina, number 12, David Henderson. For Kansas at forward, a 6'5 senior from Omaha, Nebraska, number 44, Ron Kellogg. For Duke at forward, a 6'8 senior from Scottsdale, Arizona, number 32, Mark Allard. For Kansas at center, a 7'1 senior from Wichita, Kansas, number 30, Greg Riley. For Duke at center, a 6'8 senior from Rolling Hills, California, number 21, Jay Phillips. For Kansas at guard, a 6'0 junior from Omaha, Nebraska, number 22, Cedric Hunter. For Duke at guard, a six-foot junior from Falls Church, Virginia, number four, Tommy Amaker. For Kansas at guard, a six-six senior from Kansas City, Kansas, number 35, Calvin Thompson. For Duke at guard, a six-two senior from Washington, D.C., number 24, Johnny Dawkins. And introducing the head coaches, for Kansas in his fifth season, Larry Brown. For Duke in his 11th season, Mike Krzyzewski. We're about to find out if it'll be Kansas or Duke playing Louisville for the national championship. We'll be right back to get started. Billy, our keys here this afternoon. Well, I think a number of things. Foul trouble, particularly on the side of Kansas. Dryling has got to give in this first half play a number of minutes without getting those three fouls early. Duke interior defense. Duke is not big on the inside with Manning and Dryling. Duke's really going to have to play good position defense inside. And Kansas, they've got to stop that penetration because Duke has three guys that are great with penetration. Amaker, Dawkins, and Henderson. Our referee, Paul Galvin, will toss up the ball to get it started. He is working with John Clardy and Tom Finken. Don Rutledge is the standby official over by the timer. That was the championship of the preseason NIT tournament. And in that game, Jay Billis, who was jumping center for Duke, did not play because of an injury. He got up higher than Dryling and got the tap over to Dawkins. Duke controls it. Great man-to-man -man by Kansas. And Danny Manning's out of position. Henderson. Dryling, rebounding. Hunter searches the floor. He shocked Dryling with that pass. Winds up Manning's hands, and he missed the shot underneath. And Billis just couldn't get a handle on the ball. Good Here thing. is the road to the Final Four, traveled by Kansas, and arguably it was much tougher than Duke's because over in the East, there were more, many more upsets. Calvin Thompson did not get the roll, and a foul underneath against Riley, number one. The first big moment in this game Larry Brown just shaking his head. Greg Dryling gets more fouls away from his own man by reaching or pushing. And here you see him. He's just going to push a man out of the way trying to go for that rebound. Just a touch foul. But if he keep his hands up in the air, he wouldn't get those fouls. The Jayhawks wearing their lucky red uniforms because there was so much red in the Big 8 worn by Oklahoma and Nebraska. They had switched to blue. But here today, the players voted to come out in red, and Dawkins with a spectacular move can't get the ball to drop. Hunter comes back out for the Jayhawks. Hunter pushes the right side, gets the pass to Danny, who can't get the handle. Now he comes back in his short, and Hunter comes away with another rebound. He's all over the floor. Though. He really is. He's got 39-inch sleeves. Although he only stands six foot one, normally Dawkins is the great rebounding guard. Ron Kellogg is 44 in the corner. Right now it's Henderson on Manning. Look for the lob inside. Manning coming inside. Didn't fall, but he cleaned up with an offensive rebound. Now here you have Thompson on Amaker. He's going to have problems stopping penetration by Amaker. Amaker's just so much quicker, you can see it right there. Hunter underneath with another rebound. Thompson. Manning, and Gallery stayed right with it to deflect the ball. Duke wanting to push the ball up the court quickly. Dawkins is so quick. Comes all the way to the lane and fires up a two-pointer. 
Well, Brent, if an early indication is to be seen from this game, Duke penetrates any time they want to. Now, you can't win many games if you allow a team just to blow right by you with the ball. I think Duke is going to be able to score in this game. I don't know whether they can defend Kansas, but they're going to score. Dry lane. Phyllis moves there. Three seconds, no call. Thompson lost control. Henderson gets it off to Amaker. Amaker pressures the floor. Thompson right back and off into the hands of Kellogg, who loves Great. that shot. Great play by Kellogg. He's one of the best pure shooters in college basketball, and he was able to pull up and keep his balance. See if Larry Brown starts thinking zone pretty soon against this team. Duke starts off one of five, Kansas two of eight, so both teams shooting poorly in the early moments off the steal. Manning got it into Hunter's hands. Coming down on Billis, he goes for the basket. Hunter is great on that break. He can go right up to the hoop, and he'll take it to the basket. A very much underrated player. Both teams wanting to run. Tried the lob pass. Allery up to his shot. Dryling gets it into Hunter's hands. Great pass to Thompson. And Mike Krzyzewski will call an early timeout. His team is a little tight. Someday the Goodyear blimp would make it to the final four. And we're enjoying those pictures from the Blimp America, the pilot, Captain Larry Chambers, and our cameraman up above, Bill Murphy. It's a little hotter inside than outside, but the weather's been absolutely glorious down here in Dallas, and the folks could not have handled this final four any better than what they have done in this city. Duke coming down, and uh, Billy, what about the Blue Devils? Do you think they're jittery now, or what's their problem? Yeah, they can't get that ball inside at all. They were getting penetration with a dribble. Kansas doing a good job overplaying the inside, inside passes, and now they're double teaming all over the floor. Good hustling defense by Kansas. So far, Hunter's been able to keep Dawkins from taking that ball inside down low. Step traveling. Billy, I want to make one point right now. There are more Kansas fans in Reunion Arena than any of the other three schools. They're in the upper deck, they're in the lower deck, they're all over, and they came here to make noise today. They're making more noise than they did up there in Kansas City last week. Duke in the man to man. Kellogg. He got a piece of Kellogg's arm. That should have been a foul. Really, one of the differences in the game is that Kansas has climbed all over Duke in the rebounding department in the early going. Now, that was not the case when they played earlier, nor has it been the case against Duke so far in the tournament. Sometimes when you can get easy penetration with the dribble, you take some shots where nobody's inside to rebound. There's another example. Hunter with another rebound. Hunter is winding up a lot of balls here in the early going. And Manning getting good position. Thompson jumped it off the dry lane. Short. Phyllis and Allery were covering the ball, and Danny Manning comes up and commits his first personal foul. Very, very oh, the first substitute off the bench for Mike Krzyzewski. I think what Mike Krzyzewski wants is a little bigger lineup in the game right now. Ferry has the size much better than Billis, and King coming into the game, a good defender. Billy King is 6'6", and Danny Ferry is 6'10", so Henderson will sit down. He has not shot well so far in the tournament for Duke, and Chris Piper, number 24. The first sub off Larry Brown's bench and Archie Marshall checks in. Larry Brown wanting to make sure he doesn't have a tired ball club at the end. And also, in this particular case, he gets a chance to rest drawing with only one foul on him so far. Kansas leading early, 8-2. Allery. Got Manning on his hip. a great matchup here, Amaker and Hunter. Hunter just doesn't turn the ball over, and neither does Amaker. They've got the best stats in the country in that regard. Hunter makes a quick move. King rebounding for Duke. Off the bench, pulls down a rebound right away. Dawkins flashes in the middle. 
He's dangerous on that break, even on the semi break. If he doesn't have something, he can create it. That's the confidence Kansas has in Hunter. All four men break down to the low, on the baseline. They know Hunter can handle the ball so well. Mallory steals it. Dawkins has about the best stamina of any guard I've seen in years. Drawing the personal foul as he penetrated that time, and it was Hunter. Most wins in one season. This Duke team has tied Kentucky, and if they can come away with one this afternoon, they'll have an all-time mark. Now, the other side of that is Kansas can do it by winning here in this game and then beating Louisville on Monday night. They would wind up with the record. Johnny Dawkins, 127 straight games in double figures. The all-time NCAA record broke Danny Ainge's record this year. He's on his way to getting 128 right now. Short of everything. You don't see that happen often. Dawkins, an 82% free throw shooter. He can't believe it. And the Kansas fans are treating him to that familiar chant that I've heard so often in the Cameron Indoor Arena. Air ball. Well, if I were Kansas fans, I'd let the sleeping dog lie. You know that? <laughs> because that kid plays big in the big games. Loose ball picked up by Duke. Barry gets it down to Amaker in the hands of Dawkins. Oh, wow. good job by Hunter. How about the basket? No basket is the call on this. Take a look at it. Hunter turns. He's there waiting on him before Dawkins' release. Brent, I'd really like to see the rule change that either be consistent, that it always counts or it never counts on that charge block situation. Frequently, the official is not even aware that the ball goes in when he sees the contact. Henderson jumps out, comes down, but the ball goes out of bounds. Galvin all over the play on the sideline right here. Thompson got away with a push. You'll see Thompson pushing right here. That's what knocked Henderson off balance. Ball was out of bounds, maybe on the dribble. But a big overplay by Duke. Kansas leading by a point. 13.45 to go first half. King gambled. Another overplay by King. He's a tough defender. Good cut by Martin. Marshall cut away from it, and Manning rising up. There's a personal foul, his second. We talked about early foul trouble, Brent. Larry Brown does not want Manning to get that third one here early in the first half. He's got to think about subbing. He almost can't afford to have both Manning and Drawling on the bench at the same time. Kansas goes zone to try to protect Manning. Mallory wants that ball on the side for that jump shot of his. Henderson. Rattled out, and Ferry puts it back in. The freshman from DeMatha High School has put Duke ahead for the first time. Brett, that's what I meant. When Drawling goes out of the game, Kansas becomes small. Overplay by Billy King. He picks up the foul. Comes Billy King out on the overplay. He hits the ball out of bounds. Kansas ball. He did get a piece of it right on the finger. Mallory out now. Billis in. So this is about the biggest team Duke can put on the floor. Kansas has not scored in three minutes. Manning in that. Another reach foul. That one by Marshall. Duke really fundamentally sound blocking out on the boards. And they've had to be because they're not a tall team. Dryling returns and so does Kellogg. The hairdo, the crew cut. You've noticed them on several of the Kansas players. Larry Brown is a coach who preaches tradition and they've got great basketball tradition at Kansas even though they have not displayed much winning ways lately. So in 1952, Kansas won the national championship. And several of the players said, we want to look just like that Clyde Lavella team. Let's get some crew cuts. Well, they better hope they can play like Clyde Lavella. He is still the all-time leading scorer in Kansas history. 
Manning sits down with those two personal fouls. That may surprise some people, considering the fact that Wilt Chamberlain went to Kansas, but he only played two years of varsity ball there. Hunter doesn't want to pick by up Billis. that dribble. Amaker in a foot race. Hunter tosses it back. He tried to get it off of Amaker. Amaker saves it. Well, Hunter, Hunter has did a bad thing yeah. over there. You don't want to throw the ball towards the other team's basket. Because he has moved so many times, there are always rumors about Kansas coach Larry Brown. I asked him, are you going to coach the New York Knicks next year? I won't be the coach of the New York Knicks. Um, I'm flattered that they've mentioned my name. I'm disappointed because they already have a coach, but I'm happy at Kansas. I, I'm in the third year of a four-year contract, and I think personally I need to fulfill this commitment, and I'm happy to do it. A blocking foul on the baseline. Kellogg trying to maneuver it for Coach Brown. And so what do you think about Larry's statement about staying in Lawrence, Kansas? I think he should have been a little bit more definitive. <laughs> he was pretty definitive about staying at the New Jersey oh, Nets sure. once, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I, and I think Larry is committed. I really believe that he'll be at Lawrence. The people, and rightfully so, they are just overjoyed with the job that he has done with that basketball program. He's one of the finest coaches in the country. There is no doubt about it. Let's see with Drawley in the game if Kansas can get something going inside. They haven't let him touch the ball in the low post position. He's got Henderson on him. He ought to be able to score. Hunter looking for Dryling in low. There's that little step out. Didn't get the roll. Dawkins winds up with it, showing that quickness. He got around Dryling. Pulls up with a jump shot. Great defense by Hunter. That was great defense by Hunter. He just faked Johnny Dawkins out, made Johnny pull up when he didn't want to. You see Dawkins, a little hesitancy here, goes up for the jumper, and then Hunter was right on him. He is quite an athlete. Hunter was the leading scorer in the state of Nebraska as a junior. Now he's become just a point in. guard. Good double teams by Kansas in that zone. And Allery contributes. Tough shot. Dryley did a good job not chopping down with the hands. He'd have picked up another cheap foul. Duke with the last 11 points in this game. Moving ahead 13-8. Dryley ends the run the 11 minute mark here in the first half. Good move by Kansas to realize that Drowning can score at will inside if they give him the ball in the low post. That ended a five minute drop by the Jayhawks. Billis and the foul's on Dryling. That's his second personal foul. Brent, I've watched Greg Dryling play since the high school all-star days and he picks up more cheap fouls. There he is, just kind of reaching. Just not having his feet moving. Larry Brown knowing he's in a little bit of trouble with that early foul problems. Manning and Drowling both with two now. We're not halfway through the first half. Good block out by Piper. He kept Allery away. Hunter. Blocked and fouled him. Hunter is such a good athlete that it's very difficult to get right in front of him as a defensive player. See, Amaker is quick with his feet, but Hunter just beats him to the spot. Good call by the official. Hunter will go to the line. Now, this is very unusual to have a point guard that's a great athlete. He's a super guy from a standpoint of not turning the ball over. But fortunately for Hunter, he doesn't have to go to the foul line because he's a very poor free throw shooter. You saw Piper leave. Marshall having checked in. Hunter, Kellogg, Marshall, Dryling, and Thompson on the floor with Manning watching. Tough shot. Thompson oh. put it down. Great shot by Thompson. Henderson was playing super defense on him. Well, you 
Got to give up something on Johnny Dawkins. Many people feel that he's just a good outside shooter, not great. And that's a foul on Henderson reaching over. His first. David Henderson is a great athlete who's made himself an outstanding basketball player. Not highly recruited. Intercepted again by Allery and Hunter out of frustration reached back in and committed his third personal foul. And now the foul problem starting to mount on Larry Brown. Manning with two. He's been on the bench. Dryling with two. Hunter will come out and Mark Turgeon will take over as the point guard. Turgeon is a player that doesn't do anything Brent but win. Led his team to two straight high school championships. Understands the game, and as a matter of fact, I said to Larry Brown last week, I said he'd make a good coach, and Larry said, yeah, he's going to be one. He's going to be working for me. Thompson. Again, Kansas needs to get that ball to Dryling. And he's got to want it a little more. Thompson. Mallory yanks it away, and here's Amaker. Dawkins. Hey, Dawkins has the stroke today. So tough on that break. I think Amaker thinks he can steal the ball from Turgeon. Kellogg. Good double screen by Kansas. Henderson. Loose it goes over. Ferry and King both returning for Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils. Brent Henderson will sit down along with Billis. So Krzyzewski doing a lot of shuffling here in the first half. But keeping his ball club rested. And Larry Brown really upset that Henderson getting that baseline so easily against the Kansas zone. Very fronting dryling. Denying him the ball. Marshall with the jump shot and King fouled him. Marshall had the great game against Michigan State. Seven for 12, 13 rebounds. You see a lot of pushing away from the ball now. Ferry trying to get position on Dryling. Dryling is awful strong on the inside. Ferry did a good job with him there. Marshall hits that jumper. The third foul on King. Billy, when you were doing that replay, one of the things I noticed on the floor it is starting to happen here, and to follow up on your story about Turgeon becoming a coach, he immediately called the Kansas players to the free throw line. He demanded the meeting. And it sounds like he has come out here to take charge and run this ball club on the floor for Brown right now. We're tied at 17 at the 8.33 mark, and the man to watch is going to be Mark Turgeon. Well, if anybody remembers the replay of the incident at Michigan State, Turgeon was the man right behind Larry Brown. When Larry Brown got the technical foul, I thought Turgeon was going to send him to the bench. Strickland. Dawkins an oh, offensive off. rebound. He turns those offensive rebounds into points, maybe as well as any guard that's played in college basketball in a long, long time. Dry lane. He steps, steps. What Duke's doing is they're pushing Drowling away from the basket, getting him out to the 12 to 15 foot range. Larry Brown would like him in the, the 10 to 12 foot range. The foul problems mounting for Larry Brown. You know Duke wants to go inside to make Drowling try to pick up one more. Playing a little matchup zone now. Dawkins with that quick first step. Oh, what a shot. He actually shot that on the way down. Kansas can't stop Duke's penetration, whether they're in his own or man-to-man. 
Spurgeon trying to get the ball to Dryling. Ferry with an excellent defensive job. Kellogg with the miss. Offensive rebound by Thompson. Gets the pass to Kellogg. Really, Thompson made that play. That was a tough pass. There's Thompson and Allery elbowing each other on the way down. And here's that matchup zone by Kansas. Trapping in the corners. And with that Strickland, here's Allery. No basket, they're waving it off. And that was a super pass by Danny Ferry. And Turgeon stepped in and committed the personal. You see the touch pass by Ferry set this up with a backdoor cut. I think that should have been a two-shot foul. If it's not a basket, it's got to be two shots. They're calling it one and one. He grabbed him from the behind. If that wasn't an intentional foul, I don't know what one is. So Turgeon gets away with it. And Duke is only one of four at the free throw line here. We have seven minutes to go, first half. The object, Brent, of that rule change was that if a man is not playing defense, in that particular case, just trying to stop a man from getting off the shot, it's supposed to be a technical foul. I mean, a two-shot deliberate foul. Billis has replaced Allery. One of the most important decisions being made in this game right now is by Larry Brown of Kansas. He is letting Danny Manning sit on that bench over there. The rest of the team has not lost contact in this game. He has two personal fouls. Oh, by the young man, and Ferry committed the foul underneath. Marshall was working the other side, and Thompson was coming down the lane for the lob pass. Yep, Thompson goes back door. Ferry realizes it too late. Marshall sets the screen, and there Ferry just can't get to the spot in time. <laughs> Henderson returning for Duke. Calvin. Henderson is 0 of 4 in the first half. Amaker is 0 of 2, but Dawkins is 6 of 8, and Allery is 2 of 3. They're not getting Allery a lot of shots. Well, they aren't, and Henderson's a real problem for Duke in the fact that on the year he shot 53%, only shooting 39% in the tournament. He's really been in a slump. On the other hand, Kellogg 3 of 5 for Kansas. Thompson at the line 2 of 4 from the field. He adds the free throws. Thompson had that great overtime period against Michigan State, the game that really catapulted Kansas in the, into this Final Four. They were buried in that game. Dawkins out of his range. Knocked away from Billis and out of bounds by Dryland. Tomorrow, there's an excellent women's championship game. For the NCAA title, it'll be USC, Cheryl Miller's last game against the Lady Longhorns of Texas. Number one seeded team in the tournament. Boy, Strickland just can't handle that double team. Good job by Kansas. All and Thompson dropped an opportunity out of bounds. Johnny Dawkins' quickness got over there in time. Now Strickland's having some real problems. Every time he's double teamed, he doesn't break through the double team trap. When the ball goes down the corners, watch Kansas goes in double teams. Got to get rid of that ball. Dawkins. Now, since Manning went out, Duke has outscored Kansas, but only 16 to 13. Now Johnny Dawkins going to play Turgeon. Stepped out of bounds. Ball will go over. And Allery returns. Ferry will sit down for Coach Krzyzewski. This is a tough decision, and you pointed out well, Brent, that Larry Brown's had to make with Danny Manning. I mean, he, he's wanting to keep this game close and just play half a game. But uh, it's very difficult to have a guy on the bench this long. Bad pass by Strickland. I think he's going to be sitting down here shortly. Could be right now. Billy, you might have called that. Let's see Amaker coming in and uh, Strickland heads out. Well, he's been having problems uh, with his half-court offense right along. Well, it helps Larry Brown tremendously to have someone who is as intelligent as Turgeon is. With Hunter in foul trouble, Turgeon has come on here and he has the ability to run the offense. Dryly. Just his shot. 
Yanked down by Phyllis. Here's Amaker. Lead Dawkins. Nice job by Turgeon to slow Dawkins up. There's where seniors help you. You bring the ball back out when you don't have something good. The zone has kind of slowed Duke's penetration down quite a bit. Phyllis foul on the inside. That's Kellogg's first. Jay Billis missed the first six Kellogg's games of the year for Duke. Had some knee problems. Did not actually play in the Kansas, uh, the first battle against Kansas and Duke. Has come back, took over his starting lineup from Danny Ferry, and that blend has worked uh, very nicely with the two fellas taking each other's time in the center position. Billy, in that first game between Kansas and Duke, and of course things have changed dramatically for both teams, but I remember that night that I was so impressed with how intelligent Duke played, and that reflects that this is a senior team. They have grown up together for four years. They start four seniors, and they know each other so well on the court. Billis was not even a part of that that night. They had a freshman out there, Ferry, and Ferry was able to pick up the slack, but now Billis has returned to give them even more experience. Well, those four seniors were recruited together. We're considered one of the top recruiting classes uh, in the country that year for Duke, and they faced some adversity in their early years at Duke, but have been very successful since. Three straight trips to the NCAA tournament. Turgeon dishes Great off. Play. Kellogg. Boy, Turgeon's tough. He hurt his right wrist when he fell that time. Twisted his body so he wouldn't draw the charge. Here comes the trap. That trap is working for Kansas. Ball goes out of bounds. Hit last by Kansas, and that was a hustling Mark Turgeon diving out of bounds over there. Larry Brown's wife, Barbara Brown, sitting and rooting for the Jayhawks here this afternoon. And one man she'd like her husband to shut down on is Johnny Dawkins of Duke. He has seven of Duke's 11 field goals in this game. He's been on a terror in this tournament. In four tournament games, Dawkins has scored 27, 25, 25, and 28 points. And he's just keeping it up here this afternoon against Kansas. Now, Johnny Dawkins, the first player in ACC history to score 2,000 points, get 500 rebounds, and 500 assists. Tells you he's a pretty good player all over the court. I think that Kansas has done a great job, Brent, in this situation when Manning on the bench, using that zone defense and trapping Duke on the sidelines. The point is taking Duke out of their offense quite a bit. Duke leading by the four at the 4.30 mark left here in the first half. Louisville having already won the first game. Henderson. I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski was happy to see that one go down. Henderson shoots kind of a fadeaway jumper. Sometimes his shot really gets flat. Dawkins on Kellogg. That's quite a matchup. Kellogg pulls up. And Kellogg has some size on him. Billy, would Larry like to go the next 353 and not have Manning play a bit the rest of the oh, way no, in the first he, half? You know, if Manning get, try to get half. off that bench now, he'd tackle him. No way he's putting him in there. Dryling and Billis. Kellogg made that play. The passer was screened away. Kellogg came from weak side. Did a good job knocking that ball away. Committing his first foul. You might notice when Larry Brown is up, he's sitting down now, but I'm sure that we'll catch him as he moves down the sideline. Larry moves with a noticeable limp, and he is going to undergo an operation at the conclusion of this season. He will have one of his hip joints replaced. Jayhawk teammates call him Drago. They say it looks like that fellow the Rocky Four. Manning watching. Well, we talked about early foul, early foul trouble for Kansas. I thought it might be Dryling's problem, but it turned out to be Manning's problem. In any case, that didn't help Kansas at all. He went out at the 12:39 mark. 
what a big boost that has to give you. Because without your best player, here come you the can Stay tight. Kansas Jayhawk fans doing a good job getting up off the seats. Dawkins short. Kansas can tie it, and they've got a manpower advantage. Oh, good Great speed. play by Amaker. This zone matchup zone defense is really causing Duke problems. Johnny Dawkins wanting to go down low to Allery. Henderson bangs in another way. Barry will soon check in for Duke. Tops it. Riley. Oh, Marshall. Marshall. Marshall's quick off his feet. Salary shot. Dryly. Kansas running very well right now. Set play, maybe for Kellogg. Marshall. Tied at 31. Well said, Marshall had the big game against Michigan State. Certainly can be an explosive score. Lowry loses it. Billis comes up with it. Goes. Score it. Now, Kansas was really lucky on that last exchange because they could have called another one of those touch fouls on Dryling. See the play here. There's Drawling. No question he committed a foul there. Allery goes down. Good hustle by Billis. Kind of like that John Williams shot we saw in the first game. Going flat in his back and getting it to go in. That's Mike Krzyzewski and his wife is watching from Dallas here this afternoon with Jay Billis. I like the comment in the paper I saw earlier this year. He said, Mike's career is basketball. My career is Mike. That's really great support for my wife. You see Mickey Krzyzewski around a lot of the practices when they wind up down at Duke, too. 152 left here in the first half. 34-31. Duke leading Kansas. Nate Farron has replaced Billis, so it's Amaker, Dawkins, Ferry, Allery, and Strickler. And Turgeon's clever with that ball. Amaker, every time he thinks he can get a piece of it, Turgeon pulls it away from him. Here's a little motion offense. Nobody in the low post. Kind of a little delay game. Looking for the backdoor cut. The guy that has to be careful here is Johnny Dawkins. He'll try to overplay Kellogg. Kellogg's pretty good going to the back. Billy, you get the feeling that every trip in this game is going to be important. But they'll stay close. Lob by two. Yes! What a, what a play! was some catch by Calvin Thompson. Duke cannot hold it for the last shot. They'll have to put it up. That's a double dribble. Here comes the lob. Thompson goes up. That ball actually hit a little bit off the board. Thompson was able to control it. Good hands. Dryling will leave for the last minute, so he does not pick up an additional foul, and Piper replaces him. Well, Larry Brown's won at least 20 games every year he's coached in college basketball. He didn't do that by being asleep. It's a good move to get Dryling out of there. This last shot is not that important as opposed to him picking up another cheap foul. Dawkins down low. Almost five seconds on that play. Here's the ringmaster, Turgeon. Bumped into Amaker. Offensive foul on the charge. It'll go over at the 16-second mark. 
Well, it was a clear out for Turgeon to try to penetrate and get something going for his teammate. He might have gotten need in the thighs. He's getting an awful lot of minutes here with uh, Hunter on the bench. Turgeon's been asked to do a lot. Now Duke can hold it for one. Knock free. Henderson regains it. And there's a foul. Now Kellogg was hustling. With only five seconds to go, Brent, he would have been better off letting Henderson go. Larry Brown upset with this call. Kellogg's second personal foul. Now what, what Larry Brown's complained about, Brent, is he's saying that Henderson went up for the jump shot and recovered his own shot since it was not blocked. If the ball was hit by a defender, obviously Henderson could do that. But what Larry Brown's saying is nobody touch it. Therefore, Henderson could not pick up that ball. And Mike Krzyzewski says no foul, but you're going to have to put some pressure on Turgeon because he's going to try to bring that ball up quickly. Thompson. Come to the end of the first half. The Duke Blue Devils. 36, the Kansas Jayhawks, 33. Let's go upstairs to Jim Nance. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Brent. The Duke leading by three, and Johnny Dawkins having a big first half. You still have to think that Larry Brown goes to the locker room rather pleased. His gamble paid off. His star player, Danny Manning, sitting down the final 12 minutes, 39 seconds of the first half with two fouls, and Kansas State right in the ball game, trailing only by three at intermission. We'll come back and talk with Denny Crum, the winning coach from Louisville, who will be in the national finals come Monday night after this message and a word from your local station. Today's national semifinal game is sponsored by Pontiac, America's road car company. Pontiac, we build excitement. Duke leading Kansas at halftime. The winner will advance on to Monday night's final to take on the Louisville Cardinals. And there is the Louisville team now waiting to see who their opponent will be in the championship game. And speaking of Louisville, with us right now is the head coach, Denny Crum. Congratulations, Denny. We're going to show you some highlights now of that first game. Chance for you to go back and look at what happened now against LSU. Louisville the winner by 11. But it wasn't easy, Denny, in the first half as we take a look. LSU had a lot to cheer about early. Don Redden has had a big tournament so far for the Tigers or coming into this tournament today. And Redden hit the shot there for two of his 22. Billy Thompson had 12 in the first half. But still, Dale Brown's team led 44-36 at intermission. Second half, though, it was all Louisville. The Cardinals outscoring the Tigers by 19, 52-33. Here, the ball is stripped away by Kimbrough. And there goes Louisville on the fast break. They go on to win it 88-77 to advance to the championship game. Quite a performance by the LSU Tigers this year. The 11th seed in the Southeast Conference, or Southeast region, and they make it all the way to the Final Four and put up a good battle for the first half, Denny. Well, they're a good basketball team, and obviously they've been playing well, Jim. Uh, the first half, they uh, they controlled everything, and the second half, we got after them a little bit, and they dropped from 56% shooting down to about 35. I thought the defense was the big difference in the second half. What did you tell the players at halftime? It seemed like they notched up the uh, level of intensity in the second half. Yeah, I got on them a little bit. I felt the LSU was getting all the loose balls and making all the right plays because we were letting them do what they wanted to do. And I said, these games are won with the defense. Let's get after somebody and make them make some mistakes. You had the balanced attack again. All five of your starters were in double figures. That works out very nicely. Well, that's, uh, I think, why we're where we are. Uh, we've had that throughout every game. Uh, that doesn't mean you couldn't have five and double figures and lose, but, but we played well and had real good balance throughout the tournament. I know you've been doing a lot of interviews since that first game ended, but what about Duke and Kansas? You did see a few minutes of that game. What about it so far? Well, they look like the same two teams we saw in the Big Apple NIT in the preseason. We were all there at that. And, uh, they're both great teams. They both shoot the ball real well, but I think where the, they really get you is they're great defensive teams, both of them. They, uh, they probably don't get the credit for their defense that they should, but that's what's carried them this far is their defense. All right, Denny, thank you for coming by. We'll see you on Monday night in the championship game, and we'll continue from Reunion Arena in Dallas in just a moment.
Duke leading Kansas by three points here at the half. And uh, Billy Packer, what are some of the key numbers that resulted in that first 20 minutes? Well, I thought our keys were pretty well, particularly in regard to foul trouble. But here's something that throws you off. Kansas is shooting normally on the year over 55 percent. They're not shooting well in the first half because they didn't have their men in the ball game to shoot well. Turnovers. You can see Duke has nine, which is very unusual for them. Uh, I mean, Duke has nine points off of turnovers. Kansas doesn't turn the ball over very much, but in this particular case, they haven't. Duke's taking advantage of it. Now, Danny Manning went out with two personal fouls, and also he was only one of six. Billy, have you seen him go through cold spells like that? Well, he has, and of course, I think uh, Larry Brown had a tough decision to make. It was either drowning or Manning. He had to sit him down. Danny Manning has come back with some explosive second half. Did that in the first game against Duke earlier this year. I think that uh, Larry Brown just didn't want to take a chance of picking up that third foul. All right, coming up will be the second half. The winner will play Louisville for the national championship on Monday night. We'll be right back. Today's national semifinal game is sponsored by Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. Brush Plus, the shading concentrate and brush in one for a superior shade. And by Hewlett Packard, the people who turn your business computing problem into a business computing solution. Duke starts the second half against Kansas with a three-point lead. Danny Manning will inbound the ball. He has returned to the game for the first time since he left at the 12-39 mark. And so, too, has Curtis Hunter, whom he tosses the ball to. Hunter with three fouls, Manning with two, and Dryling with two. Duke comes right back with that tough pressure man-to-man -man defense. Hunter and Dawkins fouled him. That's his second personal. Those are what kind of athlete Hunter is. You know, Dawkins has won two games this year with great defensive plays on the end of the game against Mark Price in the ACC tournament when he cut off Price at the pass, and then, of course, against David Rivers in a Notre Dame game when he went up with that sensational block just as Rivers was going to try to score to win it for Notre Dame. Billy, do you remember that one play when Turgeon fell on his wrist in the first half? Yeah. Noticed over the bench he was showing one of the assistant coaches when he came back out that there was still some pain in that. Now that young man picked up the leadership role for the Jayhawks. Hunter with three personal fouls looking down the road. Larry Brown might need him again. You never know if a wrist injury like that could become a factor in a game such as this. And remember when he got kneed in the thigh down at the other end of the court also, and that can tighten up on you. He gave him 10 solid minutes. Boy, Hunter just cannot shoot free throws. Big rebound by Kellogg. Riling comes down, five on five. Hunter only shooting 54% on the year of the free throw line. Hunter. Calvary yanks away the rebound for Duke. Big rebound right over Calvin Thompson. Henderson. Henderson got hot in the first half. That's the third jumper he's hit in a row. It's a five-point Duke lead. Thompson on the turnaround pass traveled. That was a smart play by Henderson. Thompson, of course, did not realize he was behind him. The rules of basketball are once you have the ball in your hand, the defender does not have to give you either time or distance, so you can crowd right up on the man. Billy, in that first half, Allery took only four shots. Normally, they try to get him more, don't they? Well, he tried to get the ball, but Kansas defense was matching up well inside. Billy's in deep. There's a third foul on either Manning or Dryling. I think it's going to be Manning. It is indeed the third foul of sophomore Danny Manning. Larry Brown at this point, though, Brent has got to let him play the rest of the way. You can't be worrying about fouls now. There is no tomorrow in a game like this. Billis at the free throw line. And what that hurts Manning, not only defensively, but he's a slashing type player offensively. You have to be careful not to pick up any charges. Always calm Mike Krzyzewski. He'd have made a great general if he'd have hung in there. The military, graduated from West Point, played for Bob Knight. How he's cool under fire, Mike Krzyzewski is. But when they asked him the other day what he'd be doing if he wasn't coaching, he said he'd be a general. The biggest lead of the game right now. Seven points by Duke. Dryling. Amaker reached back in, knocked it out of bounds. Kansas ball. The call that Amaker wanted was that it went off Dryling's leg. Now, if 
Darling had not put the ball on the floor, he'd have been a lot better off. You don't want to put it down there so a little guy can get a handle on it. Kellogg, Dawkins avoiding that foul. The Dawkins-Kellogg matchup is the one that seems Kansas has got the advantage. Kellogg a little bit too big for Johnny Dawkins. And he's shot six of eight so far. Henderson coming on the inside on the steal. Lead pass to Kellogg. Dawkins right with him. Great oh, pass nice. to Hunter. Great play is right. You really got the sense there that Johnny Dawkins thought he had the advantage on a two-on-one break. Good hustle. Dawkins gliding, blocked by Dryling. The possession arrow is Dukes. Oh, Larry Brown doesn't like that call. He felt it. It was almost like instantaneous touch. I'm surprised when Kansas is in that man-to-man, -man. as they are right now, they don't go inside and try to get Dryling in fur foul trouble. Now they're back to the zone. Henderson and Allery couldn't get a handle on it. On the turnover, it's Hunter pushing it down for the Jayhawks. Pass is inside to Thompson, and it won't go down. Oh, oh that's Phyllis a came up with an elbow and knocked Thompson down inadvertently. Good defense by Kellogg. All Big A defensive player. Thompson is still rubbing that chin. Uh, he took a shot. Or did he ever down there? Phyllis has got a pretty fair set of arms on him there. Dawkins. Hunter got a piece of that. Got him on the arm. And that's going to be Hunter's fourth. Very serious problem here. Great pass by Hunter. Thompson just doesn't get it to fall. Phyllis grabs the rebound. You can look at those arms. Now here's where Thompson moves in. Oh, did he catch a shot? That was inadvertent, Brent. Was that the word? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't my jaw that caught it inadvertently, I'll tell you that. Now, here comes Turgeon back in the game. He played 10 solid minutes in the first half. That's how much he averages per game on the year, just 10 minutes. Dawkins misses, too. He had an air ball the last time. Billy, when you think about the flow of the game and the foul numbers that are adding up, would you say that it is definitely now moving in Duke's favor? Well, I think it's moving in their favor, Brent, but they can't seem to pull away. Kansas is staying right there with them, and they haven't had the big spurt yet with Danny Manning. you got to figure that's got to come sooner or later. Manning has to be careful not to try to get too aggressive offensively. Let the game come to him. Thompson. That's going. Let's go it. Dawkins, his third personal foul. Thompson started the season by making all tourney in the Big Apple NIT. He has the record at Kansas for most consecutive free throws at 33. Dawkins will leave with those three personals and King back off the Duke bench. Johnny Dawkins has had a hard time matching up defensively with either Thompson or Kellogg. Now you have to look at Allery, Brent. Duke's got to get points from someplace with Dawkins on that bench. One-point game. Henderson. They let him have the shot. Allery, and he is fouled underneath. Henderson had really an easy jumper. He made it a tough one, and that's the third on Marshall. Foul is really piling up here. Now, you mentioned, Brent, that Allery hasn't seen the ball much, but when you start looking about their offensive production right now, Billis is not a scorer, King's not a scorer, and Amaker's not a scorer. So you really have Henderson, who's had a cold hand, so you would assume they get that ball to Allery more. Kellogg checking back in, and Archie Marshall leaves for Coach Brown. Allery, an all-conference performer in the ACC this year. Missed out last year and made it the year before. He's got a chance to be a great NBA player, Bill. I would agree. I'd agree. The last year in the NCAA tournament when they lost to Boston College, Allery looked like he was washed out. Like he wore right on down. Kansas 
just picking up their movement. Turgeon always looking for the open man, the cutter. And Kellogg found Manning cutting back inside as he threw the ball out of bounds. That was a great play by Billy King because Kellogg had a free path to the basket. When King jumped out there, it, Kellogg lost his concentration. Coach Brown was upset with Dryland and his lack of movement underneath on that play. He was talking to him as they came back down here to set their defense up. Darling has a tendency to get away from the basket. Good defensive job by Turgeon. Henderson back to Billis. Allery swallowed away by Dryling. And on out of bounds, King screened Turgeon from the ball. You almost want to go dunk this ball on Dryling because he'll get up there. He's 7-1, a super play by Dryling. Duke was able to get that lob going. Kansas back to that man-to-man -man with Johnny Dawkins out of there. They match up much better. Manning batted the ball out of bounds. What kind of sense with this team on the floor? Duke's having a hard time getting in their offense. They don't really know, have a man to go to. And that's ball. an ball. It'll go over to the Jayhawks. An awful lot of uncertainty right now on behalf of Duke. They lead it by three. We have 16 minutes left for Coach Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils here in regulation. Meanwhile, Larry Brown plotting strategy at the other end of the bench. He'd been to the championship with UCLA back in 1980. Interestingly enough, he lost to Louisville and then it won in the title game. Turgeon brings it up. And had a chance to win that game. I remember Kiki Vandeway going down for a shot and just couldn't get the shot off, and Louisville went on a tear. That hit Dryling's arm. What I think's happening here, Brent, with Dryling, he's getting so far away from the basket that he's not quick enough when he gets that far away from the basket to make the offensive play. He's got to really get down and low. Dawkins returning for Duke. Billis sitting down. Duke has scored only one field goal here in the second half in a game that I thought was going to reach the 80s easily. We're at 43-40 at 15-41. Allery, nice set play. Turgeon gets it up quickly, which is what Brown had told him a moment ago. Manning on the turnaround. Allery screens up, pulls down a rebound. So Danny Manning wants to get in the game so bad that he's just starting to force some things. He's got to be careful. Off the fake, he traveled. It's out of Scottsdale, Arizona. One of the nicest things about the four starters for Coach Krzyzewski they are all due to graduate on time this year. He has run a class program at Duke. And there's where you want Dryling. Turgeon. When Dryling gets six feet or so away from that basket, he's a problem to handle. Ferry lobs behind to Allery. Beautiful defensive play by Manning. Boy, Manning, he is really working out there. They got the lob again. This is quite a catch by Allery. Turgeon again in the way. That's what made the play. And then Allery reaches in and commits his first personal foul. Timeout in Dallas. We'll be right back. From Dallas, Texas, along with Billy Packer, I'm Glenn Musburger. Timeouts remaining for Kansas 4 and Duke 3 at the 14-48 mark here. And Billy Duke has been thriving at the free throw line. They have outscored Kansas there 13-6. to well, They're a 71% free throw shooting team, so it's something that they do fairly well. There's the foul trouble. Hunter, who has had to go to that bench, but Turgeon has really done the job as a replacement. Shooting only one of seven. Playing with three personal fouls. Dockett, seven of 12. He, too, is playing with three personal fouls. You know, Danny Manning's been the MVP of just about everything he's been in this year. He cannot move. He blocked the shot. Now, he didn't realize this. 
He blocked the shot. All right. Then there was the foul on Allery. It was not after a made basket. You cannot move on the end line, so that's a walking violation on Danny Manning. Just a mental mistake on his part. Something that a youngster might make, and by the time he's a senior, he probably won't make it. Experience counts a lot. Almost stolen by Turgeon. Dawkins runs it down. Well, Turgeon's having quite a game. This zone matchup defense giving Duke a lot of problems. Allery, driving, rebounding. Turgeon. Kellogg. It's a one-point game. Again, it was Turgeon that forced the fast break. Kellogg went over to his nice, comfortable spot on the wing. Allery, blocked by Dryling. Easy basket for Kellogg. Kansas leads at the 14-minute mark. Riley doing the job, isn't he? King rebounding, fouled by Kellogg. That's his third personal. Now, Kellogg has to come out, but Archie Marshall's going to come in. So Larry Brown has a nice rotation going here. Billy, because of the foul situation, the way it's mounting on both teams, the bench could well wind up deciding this game. Well, I think both teams are very comfortable with their bench. Kansas has stopped Dawkins from scoring since the 6-0 mark of the first half. They've done it with this zone defense. The Ferry's in serious trouble. Yes, sir. Turgeon from behind his back. Manning runs it down, gets it back to Turgeon. Here comes Marshall. Oh, yes, what a shot. Timeout, Duke. I think Duke needs to go for a time right here, Brent. The big Mo is going Kansas's way. Kansas has scored eight straight points. The trapping zone defense matching up by Kansas is really causing problems. Now, Turgeon's exhausted. Henderson yanked away by Thompson. Off to Turgeon. Intercepted Amaker. Turgeon fouled him. Let's take another look at this unbelievable body control by Marshall. As he comes underneath, he is all tied up. Uh, Johnny Dawkins is going to come across the lane with his great leaping ability. Marshall uses the rim to shield off Dawkins and rolls it in there. Super play. That's a little bit of Julius Irving. And a man going out of the game who gave his all for Kansas is Turgeon. You could sense it the first time he walked on the floor in this game. Well, and Hunter doesn't come in to replace him either. Hunter, remember, with four personal fouls. It's Antonio Campbell in the ballgame, so Larry Brown's had to go to his third point guard. He's quick. Ferry. Danny Ferry of late comes in and shoots that jumper. He is not afraid to put it up. Now let's see what happens with Campbell and Amaker. He's got to be careful with that ball. Campbell is a sophomore out of St. I Louis. Him. Lost it the first time. Amaker may lose it right back. And they say back it's over and back. Brent, I thought that would happen to Campbell. He, got a, he, he tries to do a little bit too much too soon. Amaker takes it right away from him. He loses it on the dribble. Now let's see if this is over and back. Yep. His foot was on the yep. line. Calvin Thompson was on the backcourt when he went over. Fatigue is going to be a factor in this game, too. Amaker. Duke has the lead again. Every trip will be important the rest of the way. 12 minutes, and Mark Turgeon will return for Kansas. Well, Larry Brown couldn't afford to have Campbell out there much longer, but... Kellogg. Boy, he can shoot. All big eight the last two years. Kellogg has hit his last seven. Henderson coming through, traveled. And credit Dryling was a play. He came over in the middle. Henderson had no place to go. And there's the Kansas Jayhawks superfan, Ryan Gray. 
young boy who's been stricken with a tumor. He's the son of a doctor. And he has become the good luck symbol for this basketball team. And what a thrill that is for the young man to be here and watch the Jayhawks in the Final Four. Mark Allery coming in for Duke. It's 50 to 49. Kansas at the 11:37 mark. Turgeon, Dryling, Manning, Kellogg, and Marshall up against Amaker, Dawkins, Allery, Billis, and Henderson. Kellogg. Eight straight. Well, Duke has not been able to match up against Kellogg all day long. Kansas starting to get a little working margin here, even though it's just three points. You can feel the most shifting their way. Dawkins. That was a tough shot to shoot that jumper over Danny Manning. This is becoming a great basketball game. Virgin just gets them in their offense so well. Mallory had a hand on the ball. Oh, he changes the call. Turgeon's quickness pulled it off. We can't say enough about what he's done so far for Kansas today. Inside to Marshall. Now they're going to score. Say, they're going to say that goaltending goal was the call. on Allery. I don't think he touched the ball. That's a great pass inside, however. Hunter back in the game now. Larry Brown going to be it. This is a great move for Larry Brown. We'll see the play here. You can touch. You can touch the net. So that was that was a call that uh, really helped Kansas. There's Allery in the middle. It'll go down, and it's another held ball, but they retain possession at this end. Mike Krzyzewski saying, why is that not a foul? Boy, Dryling has done the job, too, in the second half, staying out of foul trouble. This was one of our keys in the game, Brent. It looked like in the first half, foul trouble went against Kansas. Second half, they've stayed out of it. Piper checking in. I was going to mention one of the things that really helps Larry Brown in his rotation now, substitution-wise. He brings Hunter back in who has foul problems. Let him play the rest of the way as long as he can. Save Turgeon to the end because Turgeon's a much better free throw shooter. You want to have Hunter out of there anyway. Kellogg and Dryling will take a breather here at the 10:31 mark. In the second half, Kansas has hit 10 of 13 from the floor, and Duke only 5 of 13. Dawkins, double pump. He's having a sensational game. The player Larry Brown would like to get into the offense is Danny Manning. He has not scored here in the second half. He's sat out most of the first half. Marshall, Piper, comes back for the Jayhawks. Boy, it's a big basket when you get a guy coming off the bench not expected to score, getting a big two. Three-point lead by Kansas. Henderson. He was fouled by after the shot. Allery. And he traveled. have advanced to the national championship on Monday night and they will meet the winner of this game. Right now Kansas leading to 56 to 53. And you can just see how closely the Louisville players have been watching some of the action in this game because they'll match up against the winner. Could be Danny Manning in Kansas or could be Johnny Dawkins in Duke. Well Duke got to the final game in 78 when they were knocked off uh, by Kentucky. Vic Bubis took them to the final game against UCLA in 64. That was Johnny Wooden's first national championship. Started the string. Hunter. Gets it back to Marshall. 
Marshall's given good minutes off the bench. Both teams getting excellent bench play today. That's a walk. Kansas has already had 15 points scored off the bench. Good play by Allery defensively. And then he switches off on Marshall. Hunter with an offensive rebound. Comes underneath and Billis fouled it. That's his second personal foul. Wiling returning for Kansas. And Hunter has been on those boards, whether it be offense or defense, throughout this ball game. Although he's had to sit a lot because of foul trouble, he's a great rebounder for a guy that size. But not a good free throw shooter, shooting just 54%. Dryling has hit but one of six, Manning only one of seven, and yet the Jayhawks are ahead, 56-53. A team that has won 36 games, a team that has won 35 games. Two heavyweights going toe to toe here in Dallas. The last time Kansas was to the Final Four was 74. Amaker. Eight minutes and 48 seconds to play in regulation. Oh, good move by Hunter. That's a wild in travel. He Duke realized can tie the game this trip. Brent, he realized he walked, but he was in a very good position to score offensively. When he gets down like that, he just puts Duke in a real bad problem. Did the same thing to NC State last week. Again by Dryling. Marshall. Uh -oh. He's hurt. He injured his leg. Johnny Dawkins going to come right across like he did before. Oh, we see. When Dawkins came across there, I think it just took away some of Marshall's concentration about coming down on that floor. Tough break. Kids played a great game. He has been one of the key men for Coach Brown here this afternoon. He sits six of ten from the field, added a free throw. There's a great deal of concern on the Kansas bench right now. He made all Big 8 bench team again this year, and I go back to that game against Michigan State where he was 7 for 12, 13 rebounds, 16 points. He was the man of the hour for him in that game. Is that Dr. Brown out there? That's a tough break. One thing you hate to see in a game of this magnitude, injury to anybody. Goes in. Johnny Dawkins may catch a little piece of his ankle, and there is where his leg came down. Would not, he didn't have a chance to get himself properly supported. Hopefully, he just hyperextended his knee a little bit. Inside of 8-10, 59-55 after the Marshall field goal. Kellogg back in the game for the Jayhawks. That's going to be Dryling's first in a while, but he has done some kind of job staying this game without picking up his third foul. It's been the key to the ball game. Just amazing how different Kansas is with him in the game. Tendy to Marshall on the bench, and we'll have somebody over there to check and see what the extent of the injury and the nature of it is. Henderson, who is at the free throw line, is only three of ten from the field. But Mike Krzyzewski has to be most concerned about Allery right now because he, too, is only three of ten. Well, Mark Allery hasn't had the ball much in scoring position. This 2-3 matchup zone by Kansas kind of taking him out of the offense. Everybody, everybody. 
two-point Jayhawk lead. Thompson off the fake. Short. Allery rebounds. Amaker. Looking for Dawkins. Gets it to him. And Manning comes up over the top and fouls Henderson. That is number four on Danny Manning. Now, now Larry Brown has a decision to make. You might want to take Manning out at this spot, bring him back in with about four minutes to go. I think Larry's got to yank him here. Let's see. He'd love to have Marshall, but he doesn't have him, so he's got to go with Piper. Didn't take, didn't take Larry Brown long to make that decision. Billy, there was some blood on his knee as he heads back to the locker room. Well, at least you can see that he's, uh, although he's limping a little bit, it looks like that knee's not locked up on him, so that could be a good sign. Now, here's Chris Piper, a sophomore from Lawrence, Kansas. I like, I like Larry Brown's quick decision making. I mean, no indecision whatsoever. He, he's probably going to go to about the four-minute mark with Danny Manning sitting down, unless Duke were to get a run on him. Manning has hit only one field goal in the game. That in the first half. He is one of seven. He went to the bench at the 12.30 mark of the first half. Now 7.40 of the second half. Nice piece of officiating right there by the ref telling the players not to get in that lane too soon. Both teams in violation. Anderson ties it up. This game is everything we anticipated, Brent. Dryling hooking through the lane. Henderson snaps down the rebound. That's not Dryling's shot. That was Clyde Lavella's shot, though, I'll tell you that. Amaker fouled by Thompson. Fouls really piling up now on Kansas. And you know what's made it tough for Kansas in this 2-3 zone is now Amaker is starting to shoot the ball from the top of the key, so he's pinching in those two defenders. Larry returns Manning to the game quickly and takes Piper out. I, th I think he sees a Duke run coming here, Brenton, saying, hey, I can't let this game get out of hand, and here comes Turgeon back into the ballgame. Look at the foul trouble facing the Jayhawks the rest of the way. And they've been playing zone most of the game. Turgeon checking back in at the free throw line. Duke is thriving. They have outscored Kansas by 10 points here. They are 17 of 21 with Amica shooting. 17 of 22. Kansas, on the other hand, is 7 of 10. Both benches starting to get a little quiet. First report from the Kansas locker room. A knee injury suffered by Marshall. They do not think it is serious. Amaker puts Duke ahead. Now Turgeon comes back in rested. Larry Brown got just what he wanted. Dryling. Intercepted by Allery, who anticipated the pass. Lost control as it went out of bounds. They were trying to create something for Manning that time. You're right. This is a good play. You see, Manning has his man sealed. Allery just does a good job right there coming back in front. If Drowling could have touched past that, Manning might have had a layup. You know, we've said that Allery is shooting only three of ten, but the other side of this is he's doing a sensational <laughs> defensive job down here on Danny Manning. He's playing him tough man-to-man, head-to-head, -to -head, not getting a lot of help either. I think they're talking about the 45-second shot clock. Talking about... Now, Mike Krzyzewski, I'm not so sure Mike Krzyzewski realized what the call is there. The ball was touched by Allery, so a new 45 seconds to go up there. He wanted Dryling. Instead, he threw it to Allery, and the Blue Devils come down. Phyllis might have been holding Dryling a little bit on that play. <laughs> Dryling never got to the spot. <laughs> Takes a little strength to hold in. Henderson. Unusual shot. Thomas with an offensive rebound to lead back in. Now two Blue Devils come up. Uh-oh, that's Center's a block. foul on somebody. Dryling was one of the Jayhawks there reaching up over the top. He's holding his hands. That is Dryling's fourth personal foul.
Anderson took a tough shot. Good rebound by Billis to keep it alive. He may have committed an offensive foul, gets away with it. Here's Henderson and Allery both going up for it, and there's Drawling coming across, getting a piece of the arm. Drawling with four, Manning with four. 6.25 to play, Duke leading Kansas by one. Hunter has replaced Turgeon. Larry Brown with his five starters on the floor, and Mike Krzyzewski with his five. From Weber High School in Chicago, Mike Krzyzewski, and he went to West Point. And his Blue Devils are ahead by two. Maneuvering into Dryling. Allery fouls him. And there's Allery helping out. Even though he's guarding Manning, he realized he didn't want to give Dryling any kind of dunk shot here. Dryling does a good job holding his ground. And that's a smart play by Allery to come over and foul, making sure Dryling does not get the easy one. Good sportsmanship there. Both fellas realizing that it was nothing other than to take away an easy two five points for Dryling. he's a good free throw shooter for a big man nice touch he has such huge hands, Brent. He can palm a dinner plate with his thumb and his little finger. And that's very difficult when your hands are that big to shoot a basketball. You've got so much hand on the ball. Makes it easy to swallow the steak. <laughs> that's Anderson out of bounds. throws it over to Billy Packer. Even Johnny Dawkins couldn't go up in the air to get that one. And again, the Kansas trap out of that zone is very beneficial. 5.54 with the game tied. Kellogg back in the game. They've got their scoring team out there now. That's Riley be, pushed that's off all. on Billis. That's all. That's going to be it. That's the fifth personal foul. Dryling leaned back with his left hand and pushed off on Billis. Now, one of the things that was tough for Dryling in that play is Billis is so strong. Now, you see Billis hooking with his inside hand. There's Dryling with the push away. Obvious foul. Dryling played, a, I thought, an outstanding game here in the minutes that he was able to be on that court. Now, Piper has checked in, but what is really hurting Kansas right now is that injury suffered by Marshall. Yeah, they, they actually have lost two key ball players. They don't have their that substitute rotation that they had earlier. For Dryling, he's, although he transferred from Wichita State, he had a, an NCAA appearance there as a freshman and three straight with Kansas. So he's been in the NCAA tournament all four years of his career. The pressure squarely on that young man's shoulder, Danny Manning, with four fouls. Looking for his first field goal in the second half. That's long. Allery fouled. That's his third. A push off on the foul shot. Not something you want to do. A game of this magnitude, it's a shame that the whistles are apparently going to decide it. I always find that very unfortunate when you get two heavyweights like this, and there's no doubt in my mind, but that's what's going to be the case here this afternoon. It's a little shaky. Kellogg has his spot. Yes, sir. Kellogg, 11 of 13 from the floor this afternoon, has put the Jayhawks ahead at the 5-15 mark. You notice, Brent, how this defense has really taken Johnny Dawkins out of his offense. He had a hard time penetrating. I think he'll be able to penetrate more now with driving out of the middle. Dawkins. Off of Billis. People felt these two teams were number one, two in the country going against each other. 
to some of the latest poll they were. Now the latest word from the Kansas bench is that Marshall will not be able to return because of that knee injury. It is the right knee. He is sitting at the end of the bench with an ice pack on it, and he is finished for the afternoon, as is Dryland. Now, sometimes the case in a situation like this is that the other athletes will pick up the slack, and your opponents might relax. Two bodies go tumbling. Amaker goes in, missing the shot. Hunter comes back down. Mallory moving over on Kellogg. Inside to Danny Manning, his first field goal of the second half. And Gillis couldn't get to him. Duke calls for timeout. shaken up beyond the end line I don't know if Duke has realized it there they come from Dallas Texas along with Billy Packer I'm Brent Musburger the Kansas Jayhawks without Greg Bradley are leading at the 418 mark. Kansas with three timeouts. Duke with two. Tommy Amaker was shaken up by Coach Mike Krzyzewski. Now this game has been a brutal battle, Brent. You can see that the physical makeup of the players is starting to just break on down now. They've gone so hard. Running toward the Jayhawks. And without Amaker in the game, Kansas wisely picks up full court. into the basket. Hunter loves to take the ball coast to coast on that break. You don't want to pick up any technical foul here. Now you notice what Duke did, Brent. They went right at the middle of the zone. With Piper in the center instead of drawing, that's going to be the play. Duke's down by two on the Dawkins field goal. 35. Open offense now by Kansas. Manning saves it. Gives to Manning. Bounces off of Allery short. Checking in for the Blue Devils. Larry Brown wanting a foul on Manning's last shot. Danny Ferry checks in for Duke. And Tommy Amaker has returned. He brings the ball up. Jay Billis is out. Quick pass. Brent, you see what happens when Drowning goes out of the game. The middle is soft. You can go right at him. That's what Duke did. Exactly what Duke had to do, they did. They took the ball right at the center of the zone. Piper is no dryling. It's so much easier to take it inside. Allery gets the easy shot. Here's the penetration. Now, normally dryling would be there. They're so small without him in that zone. And Allery does the wise thing going right for the dunk. Double trouble for Kansas. Manning picks up his fifth. Manning. And Dryling have fouled out for Coach Brown. 2.47 to go. We're tied at 65. Now it's up to the two seniors for Kansas, Kellogg and Thompson. They have got to be the men of the hour because they're the scores that's that are left. That's short.
Larry Brown actually has his two point guards in the game right now. Very quick team on the floor. Might not be a bad move right now for Duke to go a little zone. Shot clock comes inside of 20 seconds. Here out for Turgeon. Thompson. Oh, look at great shot. I'm sorry, I said Duke. I mean, the Jayhawks on that great shot. Well, that was right down to the wire on the 45-second shot clock. Henderson. Picked up by Henderson. Duncan saves it. Tied again. He gets those big offensive rebounds. I thought Duke might show a little zone instead of staying this man-to-man -man because Kansas has got a quicker team on the floor. Somebody's wide open. I think it's Turgeon. Amaker doesn't realize where he is. Again, Kansas brings the shot clock down. Rebounds. Bad pass. Dawkins saves it. The one minute mark. Mike Krzyzewski calls a timeout. seconds to play right 58 seconds to play and now the problem for Duke is 36 seconds left in the shot clock so there's a 12 second differential there do you want to put it up quick and then force Kansas to come down and give you one more chance at the at the basket Duke in bad shape timeout wise you always want to say some Larry Brown in good shape Billy does it matter that because both Dryling and Manning have fouled out, if you're Duke, you really don't care that you get into an overtime game in this situation. Uh, I think that Duke would like to say, if you said to Mike Krzyzewski right now, we can call this thing off and play overtime, he'd take it. I think he can afford to play for the tie. I think in Kansas' case, it's their best interest to play for the win here. They pick up full court. That inbounds pass can always be dangerous. Kansas goes man to man. Henderson maneuvering on Kellogg, who's all over it. Dawkins hasn't touched it yet. That surprises me. Now he does. Puts it back to Amaker. Shot clock is inside of 10. They go to for the clear out on Amaker. Allery. Out of his range. Very underneath. Plenty of time, they'll probably take one. Kellogg. <laughs> On the layup. And he could not get the roll. Is he going to call a charge? Not a good signal if that was a charge. What was the call? That's not the signal for a charge. Well, that was Danny Ferry who held his ground. And it's going to be a foul on Kellogg. No basket. The basket did not go in. Turgeon asking for the basket, but it didn't go in. And he's trying to fake the official out. The kid's always thinking. Larry unable to believe the last call. Kellogg's fourth personal foul. It's going to be Danny Ferry on the line. He was able to come over from the weak side defense. He's only shooting 62%. Danny Ferry, the son of Bob Ferry, the general manager of the Washington Bullets. And is he ever making his daddy proud right now? Or his daddy wanted to hit that free throw, though. You know who's going to take it, Kellogg. That's short. Amaker snaps it down. And Duke goes into the championship game.
to shoot the free throws. One tick of the clock remaining, and it'll be Louisville and Duke for the national championship on Monday night. You notice that Mike Krzyzewski has not put any of his players down in on that foul line area. He does not want a foul or just an inverted push. Larry Brown said quite a year has had the Jayhawks. Disappointed Larry Brown leaves the floor here at Reunion Arena. He can be awfully proud of what the Jayhawks have accomplished. Meanwhile, for the Duke Blue Devils, there's one more mission that comes up on Monday night against Louisville. One more big game. Let's go upstairs now to Jim Nance. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Brent. This was nothing short of a classic, and it isn't rather ironic that the winning basket for this Duke Blue Devil team with a lot of seniors on his team, four senior starters was scored by a freshman, Danny Perry. Duke against Louisville coming up Monday night. We'll come back in just a moment to hear from the Blue Devil head coach, Mike Krzyzewski, in just a moment. So Duke has done it. They have advanced to the championship game. The Chevy MVPs, Ron Kellogg for Kansas with 22 points, and Duke's Mark Alvary, 12 points and eight rebounds. Let's go back down to courtside and rejoin Brent and Billy. All right, Jim, thank you. And uh, Coach Krzyzewski, we picked Alvary not for his offense, but his defense. What do you mean to you today? Well, he meant keeping Manning out of the ball game. Uh, you know, he showed that he can cover a post-defensive, post-offensive player, and then cover such a great player and do so well. Manning wasn't the factor that we thought he could be. One of the things, Mike, I thought was so great about this ball game is that everybody let their whole game on the floor. When it's over, guys are going to be a little sore. Now. And it was a terrific game. You know, it wasn't always pretty, but both teams played so darn hard, though. And you know that sitting on court side, you can just feel the emotion, the bodies banging. And it, it rightfully, it was rightfully so that we won it with a loose ball. Ferry picking that ball off the floor and scoring. Mike, you had just sent him in the game. Why did you send him in late? To get a loose ball off the floor. <laughs> that's that's from Weber High School. Jimmy Valvano told us. Good luck on Monday night. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Against Thanks Louisville. Going. So there it is. The Duke Blue Devils have advanced on into the championship game. And we will continue from Reunion Arena in Dallas in a moment. Your heart goes out. Billy Packer to those folks who pulled so hard for the Kansas Jayhawks all season long. Well, I think they had a obviously a very outstanding season. They cannot worry about what happened in this ball game because both teams I thought gave their hearts to basketball and it was one of the finest semifinal games I've ever had the opportunity to cover, Brent. All right, Billy, and that's it. That wraps up our coverage here from the final four from Dallas, Texas. 71 to 67. Duke beats Kansas. Now join us tomorrow at 1 p.m. for the women's championship game between USC and Texas, followed by final round coverage of the tournament players championship and then be with us at Monday night when Duke and Louisville will square off at 9 p.m. Eastern time for the national championship. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. A great moment for coach Mike Krzyzewski and now 